Now, talking about Six Underground Chat, as I said, this would have been, it had a much better name, would have been much better named if it was uh, Underground Six. I don't know why they called Six Underground. Reverse the titles, it still would have made sense. Underground Six just sounds better. But forget, forget it, the movie's already out, it's already happened. Everyone knows what it's called. Uh, this was, I think it's the first film that Michael Bay has ever done for Netflix. And uh, I honestly, I'm curious, I, I, I imagine, I don't think that this film would have done particularly well in theaters, you know. I mean, yes, you have Ron Reynolds, uh, who is, you know, half the success of stuff like, um, you know, the, the, the Deadpool franchise. Again, that revitalized his career. But I don't, I don't know if, if just him alone can uh, carry this film. Because this is a fucking expensive movie. It's $150 million. And I think just having it be on Netflix, like, that just enabled people just to check it out. Just for the sake of, well, well, this is the latest thing, and Netflix every advertises. Hopefully, it made its money back. I don't fucking know. Apparently, Netflix is billion dollars in debt. They spend money they don't have. I don't know if it was a success. I can't tell you. Edgy Berserker, thank you so much for the host. Appreciate him. He have the update. No, you're right. You're right, Chris Sarris. You're right. He, Detective Pikachu certainly benefited him. Uh, benefited with him voicing the titular Detective Pikachu. An anonymous cheer, whoever you are, good sir. Thank you for the hundred biddies, uh, sir or ma'am, sir or ma'am, I should say. Individual. Um, so that's true. The text, but I still, but it would have made a billion dollars of Dan DeVito voice of Pikachu chat. We can all agree on that, I think. Uh, but this film chat, as I said, Netflix release, uh, got a whole big push. We know the box office or how many times it was watched. No, Netflix says like everything we do is a success until they say it, it's not. Until they're like, well, you know, we're just gonna cancel this or that, or just cancel projects we never even heard of. But we have this movie, and Netflix basically, as it typically does in this time and uh, 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 of day, they just fucking write a check and they just give it to an, a creator and say, do whatever you want, whatever you want. And they did that to probably the wrong person. <laughs> They did it to Michael Bay, which I'm sure, listen, he's gone off the rails before. He's just had studios, hey, yeah, no, do, do what we need to do. But I really, truly feel that Netflix just said, yeah, Mike, do, do it. Just make a movie. And he's like, I can? <laughs> All the explosions? <laughs> Follow, who is this? Got a lot of Following for gifts of following for gift subs. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> Still, nonetheless, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Um... And so that's what he did, Chad. He just, Michael Bay made the movie he wanted to make. And I'll say this about it. I'll say this about it. There are some really imaginative action scenes. One, really there's one in particular. Comes to the end of the film, and they and he fucking milks it for all it's worth. And it's very fun. There's no doubt about that. But for the rest of the movie, it's just a hodgepodge of quick cuts and explosions and fucking bodies. Getting sucked under automobiles, chat. And, and, like, you're following characters you really have no feelings towards. They're just fucking meat automatons, chat. They're just fucking meat. They're, they're, they're all beautiful. They're fucking sexy as all hell. I mean, these are models. I mean, Ryan, look at that. I mean, Ryan Reynolds is a hunk of a man. We all agree. But he's got some of these other actors in here who are also very beautiful and very sexy, male and female. I mean, he, and Michael Bay's like, I'm going to show off everyone's ass in this film. You get all of it. All the booty butts, Chad. The booty butts, the front and the back, the bazoongas, the bazingas. Everything's out front and center. Every, even the fucking supporting characters. You're like, is that character going to be of any importance? Oh, no. Ryan Reynolds is just fucking her. That's the importance. And he's just going to come in the end and do like a whole, like, holy shit. That's kind of a twist what they did with the sexy French girl. I was like, oh, interesting. I don't know why he even cared. It was more like a booty call. But uh, we're not even there yet, Joe. We're not even there yet. But that's what this is. It's fucking boobs. It's fucking ass shots. It's fucking explosions, st funny stereotypes, cultural stereotypes, and making fun of the foreign guy because he sounds funny. It's it's a Michael Bay movie, chat. It's a Michael, movie, Michael Bay movie out of its goddamn mind. And does, is there some stuff that's good about it? Sure. There's some fun action scenes. But for the most part, this is not my kind of film, what, what I want to go and see. It, it was it was just, I, I just kind of let it wash over me because I stopped trying to even, I mean, it makes sense. I will fucking go into it. All right, I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna give you the fucking bare bones of what this is. Fucking Ryan Reynolds, he's a he's a billionaire. He says that like I have all this money and I got bored and I just wanted to kill bad guys. You know, I apparently Ryan Reynolds invented magnets. He's the magnet man. 
And he's like, I'm going to invent magnets, and all the magnets are in your cell phones and your cars and your microwaves. And techno technology, chat. I did all that. I have, I'm fucking basically Bruce Wayne. I'm the Batman. And I just got bored of my life. And you know what? I, I'm watching fucking CNN and on the mainstream media chat. And Ryan was like, you know what? I just want to kill all these bad guys they're talking about. I want to go ahead and assassinate all these dictators, overthrow a government or two, you know, and fucking just kill innocent people just because I can. I get, listen, I get it. Like, he's going after, like, worse people in the movie. But he barely doesn't give a shit about killing innocent people because they kill a, a lot of innocent people in this movie, chat. And I'm like, oh, that guy... Maybe he died. Maybe he got injured. Like, no, th that person is definitely dead. And he was just doing a job. Or he was a cop. Or he was a fucking old man just working in Florence, selling his wares for 50 fucking years. The wife's been on his ass forever. The only time he can have any peace chat is when he's just outside painting these stupid fucking tourists. And then a fucking BMW comes down and he gets sucked under the wheels, chat. Because Dave Franco hit him and wasn't paying attention. That's what Six Underground is. And so, we open up. <laughs> we open up. And uh, it's it's the whole Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds narrates the film. He's doing the whole spiel. This is who I am, billionaire. I put together a team. We're ghosts, basically. Like, listen, if you're going to join me on my vigilante escapades, you got to, first of all, fake your own death. Uh, you can't interact with anyone again in your life. And we're going to hunt the worst of the worst of the world. Dictators. Um, you know, war criminals, all that kind of shit. They're going after one particular war criminal chat. I don't know what his name was. It's uh, it's the Central Asian nation of uh, Turkestan. That's where they're going. They're going off to the, the, the one of the dictators of Turkestan chat, and you gotta track him down. They gotta get to where the where the money is and get to make sure they can uh, inf infiltrate and take out all of his support and everything else. And so they're in Florence, chat, and a fucking deal goes bad. Apparently, the dictator of Turkestan. I, I don't know what the fuck a guy's name is. Chat, help me out. Here's, who's the guy? Oh, uh, uh, Ro Ravich. His name is Roach. His name's Roach, chat. His name, I'm going to call him Ravich. Ravich the dictator. And so apparently, Ravich the dictator, he bought some uh, um, uh, at, like guns and gas weapons, like chemical weapons that he uses against his own people from a mob boss. How does a fucking mob boss in Florence have chemical weapons? I don't know, Chad, but he does. And the mob boss sold them to Ravage. Ryan Reynolds is like, hey, uh, you know what? Be a big solid if you could tell us. Well, one, just figure out like who you gave it to. That's what it is. You don't even know that Ravage has it right now, Chad. And fucking mob boss is like, mm -mm, not going to do it, buddy. Not going to do it. And then, uh, you know, Ryan Reynolds is like, I really wish you would. Because I'm going to have to fucking rip out your eyeball and then access all your secret files. And my boss is like, you're not going to do that. But then it does happen, Chad. We don't find that until later. But he does indeed murder the mob boss and rip out his eyeball. And then he jumps into a car, Ryan Reynolds, which is being driven by James Franco's little brother, Dave Franco. Um, he's, uh, oh, that's the other thing, Chad. Like, they all have um, numbers. Like, that's their new name. So, Ryan Reynolds, he's one. You got two hot chicks. You got the blonde girl and the dark haired girl. I don't know what their names are. I, th I, I don't even fucking know what the. Maybe she's. It's two and three. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, I'm just gonna call them blonde girl, blonde girl, a uh, dark haired girl, Dave Franco, Ryan Reynolds. There's a parkour British man, Chad, a Cockney. We're just calling Mr. Cockney. Mr. Cockney there. And you have a very suave, hulking uh, um, Mexican man. And uh, they all have specific jobs here. But fucking uh, Ryan Reynolds, Dave Franco, and the two uh, hot girls there are in the, in the back of the car, chat. Fucking blonde girl, she got shot in her tum-tum, chat. And the dark-haired girl, apparently she's a, 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 an ex she's a combat medic, a surgeon. And she's performing fucking belly surgery on here when they're just speeding away from the mob, chat. And you think, well, Dave Franco, because he's the, he's the driver in this situation, chat. He's like, he, this is what they recruited him for when he left behind his life. It was to drive. And you think, oh, this guy, he knows, like, all the things about driving. He's like, no, I mean, he's a cool driver, certainly, like that. He knows some stuff. But does he care about, you know, like, you know, getting out of the way of pedestrians? No, because throughout this entire chase sequence, Chad, he is fucking mowing pedestrians down like it's nothing. And Ron Reynolds is just joking the whole time. That, that, what the, Ron Reynolds' dialogue amounts to just making references to uh, classic uh, 80s and 90s action films and television shows and 50s, like fucking Leave it to Beaver and shit, Chad. 
Like that's the kind of stuff. That's right. That's the. I would say ninety percent of Ryan Reynolds' dialogue is that. Some of the, and then you got the, the other characters. They're fucking each other. You got like four of them just going at it the whole time. You're, there's other characters introduced later, but like no one's a true person really. They may have tried to give some context, a little bit of backstory, to some of these people, but it just feels so superficial and you've just seen it before they just don't care it's like this let's just fucking get to the action i don't care about the the, the mexican hitman and his mom it's like he's a scumbag he's an idiot and it's like i don't care it's like she has all timers oh it's so sad but even when she fucking comes she was like you're a piece of shit then she fucking forgets chat it doesn't matter so fucking uh ryan reynolds day Fringer, they're driving the car chat uh, the one girl she's getting the tummy surgery. He's mowing down people. He's doing, he's performing all his moves. Ryan Reynolds is trying to pull the eyeball out to access the files of the mob boss. And he eventually does so. He eventually does so. And he's like, oh, it's the dictator of Turkestan, Mr. Ravitch. Mr. Ravitch. Oh, now we know who the person is. So we just, you, Dave Frank, you just got to guess the hell out of him. Dave Frank was like, yes, sir, I'm going to do just that. And he doesn't really say, sir. He's, you know, and also, Ryan Reynolds has like a distinct hatred towards millennials. And he always refers to like Dave Franco as a millennial and the Cockney kid as a millennial. It's a little, it's a little annoying, Chuck. No, come on. And all the millennials, like they don't understand like any references to anything. Like they're kind of treated as dumb for the most part, except they're good at like one thing. Dave Franco's, uh, you know, uh, is driving and the Cockney kid is fucking uh, parkour. But anyway, uh, so Dave Franco, he's trying to get away from some people, chat, but he fucking fucks up. I think something happens where he can't see and he is a meat he's a fuck he's impaled chap by a forklift it goes right through his chest and his tummy and blah, just blood and guts is sprayed out of his mouth so he's dead and ryan was like oh we gotta get the fuck out of here also the blonde girl she gets the bullet taken out of her tummy chat and the dark hair girl they leave too um everyone meets up the fu- there's the british cockney kid he- he's doing parkour i guess there's also the uh the mexican hitman he like fires a grenade like threw a grenade launcher at a guy and you see the grenade like hit his face and like just take all of his jaw and teeth that was pretty cool that was cool slow motion he does that so they meet up chatting they're on a boat now basically tell him like yeah we got to go stop Rizarovich or whatever his name is and they have somehow they got dave franco's body i'm not sure how again ryan Reynolds is like i paid I, I i'm a billionaire i have all this excess wealth it does i got his body and they're like did they do we know his name he's like he was five that's his name and and they're asking, did he have a family? And it's like, oh, he, we're, uh, we're his family. And Ryan was like, uh-uh. Don't start that, you know, Fast and Furious bullshit. We are not a family. We have a mission. This is what we're tasked to do. Throw his ass on the board. So they just fucking weigh little Dave Franco's body down, Chad. And they just fucking throw him into the Florentine River where he's now there forever. <laughs> so he's gone. Dave Franco is dead. He's out of the film. Ryan Reynolds is like, okay, we're down a guy. I got to start recruiting. And so he has to get his uh, his number seven chat, even though it's called 600. Well, I don't think technically have six members now, but he's got to get number seven. It's when the, you're not going to get the previous guy's number. This is how this works. And so he's looking for uh, a guy named Blaine, chat. Now, Blaine, he is a expert sniper, part of the U.S. military. We get a little bit of his backstory. Apparently, he's unsatisfied. He's uh, disappointed, disenfranchised the U.S. military. He could have taken a shot, saved some of his guys, but his superior said, don't take that fucking shot. It's like, listen, these guys, these are obviously terrorists about to blow up our base. And the, and the guy on his intercom says, don't take the shot, man. Don't worry about it. And of course, what happens is that fucking thing blows up. All his friends and compatriots, you know, they're all taken out. He's like, fuck this, I'm done. Quits, Jack. Ron Reynolds infiltrates his apartment he's just been living there the entire time like he's on his balcony and blaine like you know probably would have immediately shot ryan reynolds but he's like you're just too damn handsome what why are you here ryan reynolds and ryan reynolds tells him listen i know everything that happened i know that you're unsatisfied with uh, military life and the u.s military come join me i'll never tell you not to shoot and blaine's like soul what do i gotta do well you gotta pretend to kill yourself never contact your family members again and we're just going to go on missions where I will, you know, we're not really going to look out for each other. It's a one and done type of thing. You know, if you make it, you make it. That's great. We'll go on to the next mission. But hey, if you're, if you you know, you're far behind, I'm going to cut you loose. And Blaine's like, sounds good to me. So Blaine, he uh, uh, does a faux suicide chat, jumps out of a boat, uh, pretends to drown. They're at his funeral. They got his friends and family. They're all crying over his body. It gets, it gets, it gets sad and really kind of pathetic because he's got one of his friends there. <laughs> who's like making call of duty references and like okay we can move on we can move on it's it's the michael bay type of humor chat and it just doesn't 
it doesn't really work in this scene. Like, I get what you're going for, but it's like, all right, let's, let's get going. And again, fuck, reference after reference to a movie or a TV show. It's all the one-liners and catchphrases, and they just don't work. Because so much of the, of the character's dialogue is just that, especially the Mexican hitman guy. That's like everything he does. Like there was an entire action sequence where he's making nothing but those references the entire time because he's on laughing gas. Because I don't know, I guess they ran out of the like knockout toxin or something. Like, no, it's just, we got this from a dentist. even mentioned we got this from a dentist office. I don't think that would take these people out. It doesn't matter. So Chapel Blaine is he's introduced to the group and they do the whole, they do backgrounds for everybody. It's, it's dispersed throughout the entire film. Uh, they, they do flashbacks with some of the people. They also do flashbacks of Ryan Reynolds, apparently, how he met uh, Rasevich, or whatever the hell his name is, the, the dictator of um, Turkestan. Uh, like I'll, I'm going to tell you the backstories, everybody, at least the ones I remember. I don't think we ever see the backstories to the blonde girl or the dark-haired girl. Apparently, Michael Bay's like, don't need to know about those women. They're just there to show off the bazoongas and the asses. That's it. And I'm, I'm not saying that to be sexist, Chad. That's just what Michael Bay did in the movie. I, I, I don't. If they have backstories, I don't remember. But Michael Bay did show. He showed the backstory of Blaine. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Dave Franco had the guy backstory. He's just a driver. Uh, we also, oh, we also see Ryan Reynolds' backstory in the beginning, how he fakes his death chat, uh, plane accident, uh, in one of his private planes that he was flying. But, we learn about the, uh, the Cockney kid. Apparently, he was a jewel thief back in his day in Mary Island, England. And, uh, you steal him from the Queen, stealing, matter of fact, Chad, he was stealing from Buckingham Palace with some street urchins. It might as well be Oliver Twist, chat, modern day. But here's the thing, while they're all hopping and skipping and parkouring, he, he didn't, he, he kind of screwed up, chat. And he was hanging on by the, the, the skin of his teeth, literally. Like, holding on to the jewels, like a fucking necklace, and his, like, his lover or something, or friend, holding this thing. But she's like, fucking, she slaps him, Chan. He falls down, like, through a whole bunch of shit, like, definitely would have been dead, or serious internal injuries. And, you know, she doesn't give a shit, like, we're rich, let's get the fuck out of here. So he falls down, chat, knocked out, wakes up, tied up to a fucking hospital gurney, chat. Shotgun point, like a, a double barrel super shotgun from Doom. Pointed right at his face, and Ryan Reynolds, he's just sitting there interrogating him. He's like, hey, man. And basically, it's a whole test. Ryan Reynolds wants to know if he's actually afraid. Are you afraid to die? And the guy, first he's panicking, but afterwards, he's like, no, I'm fucking do it. Just fucking kill me. And then Ryan was like, okay, you can join my team. And the Cockney kid's like, all right, sure, he joins the team, chat. We also cut to the Mexican hitman, and he's very much what his what he is. He was a Mexican hitman, chat, killed, you know, uh, working for the cartel, uh, killed some people. Apparently, he got a conscience when one of his targets has a daughter, even though I'm, pr I'm pretty sure all of his previous targets also had children, family members that would have been sad. And he's like, I need to meet Ryan Reynolds. And we don't really see him meet Ryan Reynolds yet, but he does. He also has a mother, which he's supposed to not contact anymore. She has Alzheimer's, and she hates him. Uh, and she kind of confuses him with her other son, who she actually loves, chat. And Ryan Reynolds says, I told you not to keep your connections. I'm going to have to, I'm going to threaten to blow your brains out. Right, Reynolds is just out of it. Like he, he has very strict rules. Well, he, you know, sometimes he has very strict rules. Like, no, don't visit anyone from the past. But he's like, ah, forget it. And he makes a TV or movie reference. It's like, all right, fuck. Let, let's just keep going, I suppose. Let's just keep going. Oh, so did we know any of the other? I think that's it. We covered all the characters. Yeah, so Ryan Reynolds explains. Okay, so we're going after uh, Ravich, Razarovich. I'm going to call him Ravich, Chad. He's the dictator of Turkestan. Uh, apparently, he has a younger brother who is the complete opposite. He has a moral compass. He's a good... He's fuck. We got, like, we got the black hat of uh, uh, Ravage, and we have the white hat of, I think, Murat. His name is Murray. We're going to call him Murray, chat. His name is Murat. I'm going to call him Murray. Murray's the good brother. And he's like, listen, what we're going to do, we're going to stage a coup. We're going to get rid of Ravage, and we're going to put in Murray, good old Murray, in there. But thing is, apparently there was a power struggle. Murray lost. Now, Ravitch, you know, even though he's a piece of shit, didn't want to kill his brother. He just kind of put him in exile, Chad. He's keeping him in Hong Kong. That's where he's keeping him. And he's got him in this very lavish penthouse. Basically, it's a prison. You know, it's a very pretty prison. There's a whole scene. Oh, see, we see Ravitch doing some nefarious shit, Chad. He's bombing uh, refugee cap, uh, camps, you know, on, the on his borders. He's murdering his own people constantly just to stay in power. Like, he, they emphasize he is just a piece of shit. We see him talking to his brother. I, I admit, like, the best acting in the movie is between Ravitch and Murray. Uh, like, their dynamic is interesting to me. 
Um, where Murray's like, listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. Like, I appreciate you not killing me, but you're not going to stay in power for long. Even if I'm not the one that's going to take over, someone else is. And they got that rabble rabble, they always back and forth, chat. And so Reynolds is like, listen, we, we got to get Murray out of there and then we got to destabilize uh, the regime of Ravage. Also, apparently, Ryan Reynolds has another flashback sequence where he was in France. He was in Paris, France, like four years ago. Chad, we actually met Ravage, and he has a conversation with him. They're, they're at an opera, I guess. I guess that's when Ryan Reynolds was getting intel, maybe, possibly. I don't know. Um, he also banged this very attractive French waitress, Chad. I mean, again, the bazungas, the bazingas, the asses, they were just going at it in that hotel, that French hotel room, Chad. Uh, it was like a one night stand and then he's gone. He hasn't seen her in four years, but she'll come back. She'll come back in the end for whatever reason. Um, cause that, I don't know. He just, he just felt such a great emotional connection for her in the, the less than 24 hours he spent with her four fucking years ago. This guy has some issues. Ronald has some issues in this movie, but Ronald's his team. They're like, okay, we got to go ahead and get Murray. That's the first step. And then we'll go to Turkestan destabilize. Oh no, that's not true. No, we're actually going to go to Vegas because chat. Ravage says, hey, I want you guys to go to America. You're going to buy some uh, chemical weapons and use my own people. And I trust the four generals. And they're just fucking disgusting. They got, they definitely got the diabetes because they're just walking around, just giant bubbles of blubber. And, you know, they're just, they're just there to make the deal, gamble, and get their fuck on and drink. That's what they're exactly what they're doing. That's what Ryan Reynolds wants them to do because then his team infiltrate while the generals are just banning all these hot women. And they come and they they blast. They, they come in and they start blasting, chat. They blast all the fat generals. They get to the last fat general, chat. And they're like, hey, we got to know where uh, Murray is. Ravage his brother. And he's like, he's in China. Thank you. And they shoot his fat ass, chat. He's done. One guy gets shot, hits his fucking toilet, and face in his own pee and poop, chat. He's got a pee and poop face. And so they fucking leave. The, the Mexican hitman and the blonde girl, they go at chat. They, they get in like a relationship. They're fucking, as they say, not making love. They're fucking. Uh, so they're going at it too. Also, the copy kid, the dark haired girl, they're also, there's something, they're not like, nothing overt, but they're, they're clearly attracted to each other. They have a more stable relationship, Chad. We see at the end of the movie, they're like, they're, they're actually dating and shit. It's like, oh, it's kind of good. That's healthy. Like, these kids are the fucking millennials. He's always making fun of the millennials, Chad, and yet they're the healthy, they have the healthiest relationship in the movie. They're like, they're trying to establish commonality before they get to the, you know, the, the, the sex. But it's like, okay, let's go to China. And so they go to China, Chad. And they scope out where he is. It's this amazing uh, uh, apartment, Chad. There's like a, a pool that's like at a vertical angle. It has hundreds of gallons, if not thousands of gallons of water. And they're like, okay, we're going to infiltrate, Chad. And it's like a multi-layered thing. You got the parkour kid. He's coming up from the top. He's hanging out in the pool area, chat. You have the dark-haired girl, the, the Mexican hitman, the blonde-haired girl. They, they infiltrate using laughing gas that they got from a dentist's office. And that takes out all the security guards in the bottom floor, except for one guy, because he held his nose, literally held his nose like that and called the cops. And he said, oh, shit, he called the cops. Uh, we have, they're going to be here in 13 minutes. They actually arrive in 15 minutes, chat, but we got to do this in 13 minutes. Like, shit, okay, let's start doing it. Uh, also got the sniper. You got Blaine over on it. Like, he take, he's taking guys out, chat. Uh, everyone goes over there. They start attacking. They start wrestling, uh, trying to get good old Murray out. Murray's like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, he's just like, I'm being kidnapped. And then there's where the stereotypical, like, oh, you know, like all that kind of shit. Oh, praise Allah. Like all that. I'm like, no, not great. Not good. So he's freaking out, chap. Uh, but they do manage to get him out of there. They got him on like a little zip line. They're blasting everybody. At one point, a bunch of like, they're cornered. And the sniper's like, all right, listen, there's only one situation you to get get you guys out of there. Hold on to something. You've seen this in the trailers for the movie. He fucking shoots the pool, chat. Because apparently the fucking pool is above everything. It's above like the apartment itself. It's this giant rectangle pool built at like a at like, I don't know, like a 30 degree angle or something. It's very weird. Very weird. But he shoots that. All the rushing water comes in. All the people are getting like sucked out of the of the building. They're falling to their death, chap. Uh, eventually, like there's enough guys gone. Um, they, they take good old Murray, chat. He's scared out of his goddamn mind. The Mexican hitman just starts punching him for some reason to knock him out. I'm like, Marvel's like, what are you doing? Stop doing that. Stop hitting him. They send him over, chap. They escape. They get in a car. Um, 
some other people get in the car. Sniper guy, he gets in the car with the uh, the, 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 the the dark haired lady. So the last guy there is the Cockney guy, the Cockney X eighty guy chat, but he can't escape because he was busy parkouring and hopping and skipping everywhere. He's stuck up there. And we got the James Bond henchman who's just this big burly uh, also Cock Cockney, maybe Russian man. No, I'm gonna say he's also Cockney. I think he's Cockney too. And so there's it's it's a battle between the Cockney accented rogues, chat. And but you got, you know, the, our Cockney man, he's like, you know what, fuck, I gotta just do my parkour and get out of here. And he's being pursued by this these guys. And Ronald's like, oh, fuck him. That's, that, that's just the way it is. We're gonna need a new number four. I remember his name was number four, check, because he said his name often. So we're gonna need a new number four. But fucking Blaine, number seven's like, fuck that. I am not letting that happen. No, sir. We're gonna go back from, like, Ronald's like, that's not what I want. And then Blaine says, I don't care. And then he's like, and, and Ronald goes, okay. And so they fucking stop the car immediately over where Blaine, or excuse me, where number four is fighting the very large Cockney accent, man, they're just wrestling, chap. Fucking Blaine, number seven, he looks up, shoots the guy, he fucking tumbles over. Uh, number four is very uh, gracious and very happy uh, towards number seven. Reynolds is just, mm, he's very peeved about it, chap. There is a bit of a, 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 a wrestle later on once they got Murray. They keep also beating the shit out of Murray for some reason. I don't know why. Like, the Mexican hitman keeps doing that. It's very rude. But, there's a bit of a a bit of a, a, a wrestling match between uh, number seven and Ryan Reynolds, and this is saying it's like, all right, fuck it, I'm just gonna let's let's just do let's just let's what's what's you? They said like, we're a family. Like he Blaine's like, oh, we're gonna be a family. All right, we're gonna make this in the Fast and Furious franchise of Michael Bay movies. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I might say this At, Atto the Veld. I'm gonna call you Adam. I'm gonna call you Adam. Welcome to stream, Adam. <laughs> a lot of fuck. That's what they're doing. They're always fucking this movie. I, I'm just telling you what's happened. There's a lot of sex scenes in this film, chat. A lot of sex scenes. Although it's PG-13, so you see just a lot of like lingerie and like kind of the pelvic muscle, like not the dick and balls, chat, but just the pelvic muscle. You know, like on Ryan Reynolds, he's got a hell of a pelvic muscle. There's no doubt, doubt about that. But just like a lot of like. Lawn, like tight lingerie showing off all the asses and all that kind of thing is it radar maybe but i think it's radar possibly for violence chris or is radar for violence but not for there's i don't think there's any nudity in the movie i, I don't recall any i think i would have remembered but there's a lot of ass in it no doubt about it but uh so blaine's like hey what's your name and so everyone starts saying their names chat i don't, I may, I don't know what their names are i know blaine because they says his name uh oh yeah number four the cockney mexican his name is billy he's like you gotta look like a billy you look like a billy the uh, I don't know who this is. Oh, the the Mexican hitman's name is Javier. Um, the blonde hair girl, she's number two. Chad, just to let you know, she name is Camille. I'm just gonna call her blonde hair girl, Chad, because I don't know. Her, I'm not gonna remember her names. Camille and the dark hair girl, her name is Amelia. Also, Dave Franco. Uh, this is funny. <laughs> this is when you know Michael Bay does not give a shit. We also find out what uh, Dave Franco's character's name is. It's Dave. <laughs> He didn't give a shit. <laughs> You're going to die in the opening 10 minutes. Hey, we're just going to call you Dave. I love it. So, you know, they have they have their moment chat. Ryan Reynolds, he's a little pee, but he's warming up to the idea of people just getting to know each other. And now, you know, the uh, uh, Razarovich, Ravich, whatever his name is, he's getting he's getting scared now because his brother, his brother's gone. His top generals are gone. He fucking, like, he's like, hey. Why well, need four new generals to carry out my evil orders? Let's bring... And this is a fucking Darth Vader moment to have, Chad. He's like, all right, who are there? Um, you know, who, who, are, who are the four generals that should take over after them? And they bring them on top of this building, Chad. It's like, generals, you are here because you were next in line. I'm going to throw you off that fucking roof. And they fucking just they throw them off a roof, Chad. And, and, and Robin says, I did this because they had the most to gain. So the people under them are now the, the generals who I will have. It's like, wow, <laughs> Jesus. Mr. Yasmin, welcome to stream. <laughs> so, uh, Red Rolls, the whole team, they infiltrate uh, Turkestan chat. They got Murray. They set Murray up. Oh, they, they do also infiltrate the um, propaganda station where they control all the television and news of, uh, of Turkestan chat. They infiltrate, they hack and everything so Murray can do his uh, address. Murray's like, okay, I mean, I'm a little scared about this whole thing, but I'll fucking address the people. 
And I think he does. So when, right when uh, Ravage is about to make an address to the people, uh, Murray comes in there. He's all like, but he's bummed a little bit. But then he's like, Benny, you know, he collects himself, chat, and he wants a revolution. And yeah, the revolution is happening as we speak because of the words of Murray, chat. The revolution has begun in Turkestan, and the uh, uh, Ravage, he's like, well, I got I to get the fuck out of here. These people are going to be tearing me apart. I want to get to my big old boat. We see the boat at one point, Chad, his very uh, opulent yacht. And they say it's very girthy. It's got, it may not be, it may not be long, but it's got that girth. I'm not kidding you. I'm not being crass, Chad. They literally call it a girthy yacht. Very funny, Michael Bay. So... We also get a scene where it's like, okay, we're going to have to get on. Like, they, they have the whole plan. That's how we're going to infiltrate the yacht. Fucking Cockney kid, you're going to come in this way. Cut the telecommunications so they can't call out. Uh, the, um, Camille, the blonde girl, you're going to infiltrate. You're going to be one of the party guests, I think, at one point. Like, oh, they, they all have jobs, Chad. It's, it's an action scene. You know it's coming. This is the way it's just going to be. And so, uh, Ravage, he goes ahead. He gets onto his boat chat. He's locking shit down. But then our team, the six undergrounds, I prefer to call them the underground six, they start attacking the boat. Oh, meanwhile, when, when, when Ravage was trying to get to the boat, he's like, all right, fuck these, fuck my people. Run them over. And he just orders his guys, hit all of my people. And you see these bodies just flopping up in the air, getting sucked out, sucked into the tires, chat. Just like repeatedly hit, like lacerations, body just fucking popping. Orders his guys to fire on his people. Orders his jet fighters to attack his own city. Helicopter's like, all right, we get it. He's evil. I understand now. Um, he contacts his generals. Hey, guys, fucking start targeting all the hospitals. The like, kill the future. Kill those kids. Target the school. I mean, dictator type stuff. Target the hospitals. Target the schools. Target the senior citizen uh, centers. Anywhere anyone's weak or defenseless, murder them all. And it's like, wow, dude. And the general's like, ah, we kind of feel uncomfortable with that. But thankfully, chat fucking Murray Eberson. Good old Murray's like, no. And they all say, we're with you, Murray. <laughs> oh, we got a new follower, Chad, new Huckleberry. Cobb underscore two. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well tonight. Mm. So, chat, we go to the intrepid underground six. They're attacking the yacht at this point. Each one is doing their, their whatever job. But this is where we get to the really cool action scene where, hey, I give, I give, I... I tip my hat to Michael, my non-existent hat to Michael Bay, Jack, because he created a really fun action scene here. Like, this is not me being facetious or sarcastic whatsoever. So, as we learned before, Ryan Reynolds just happened to invent magnets. That's his thing. He invented all the magnets in your cell phones, in your cars, in microwaves, for anything, an electronic device. It, it was based on his technology. That's why he has these hundreds upon hundreds of billions of dollars. That's why he's basically Batman. And he's somehow been able to, using a cell phone and, like, magnets with microchip technology, where he puts them in the bowels of the ship, and he makes the ship a super magnet. It's dumb as fuck. It's, it's dumb. doesn't make any sense, but it's cool, chat. Because what he'll do is, because he's now created the ship as a super magnet, he can now control of his cell phone. So if he presses a button, chat... The, they, all the magnetism shifts to, to, to the left or it shifts to the right. That's what happens. So when they're all surrounded by all the guys that got all their guns, because all oh, Ryan Reynolds' teams, they have, like, plastic guns and, like, plastic bullets and stuff. It's like, well, what's that about? Like, hardened plastic check and still penetrate your body and your tummy. And he's like, okay, this is going to be very important. And so he activates it after it's a whole comedic sequence. Like, oh, I dropped my phone, my phone. He's got to put, it happens twice, chat, in the same action. He drops it twice. <laughs> He has to put it all back together. But he activates it, and these poor schmucks, they get fucking sucked to the like the left side of the ship chat. I mean, their their bones are breaking. They're, it's because they're wearing Kevlar. They're wearing armor. They're, they're watches and things. Like anything they have metal, they're the enamel in their, uh, or not the enamel, but their fillings and things. Like, ah, I mean, all the fucking teeth are being ripped out, and their jaws being ripped in half. It's like, wow, that is fucked up. So they're being thrown side to side. There's a grenade, guys. Someone throws a grenade. And, but it fucking goes right next to this guy's body. He's like, mm, he's trying to reach for a chat. It fucking explodes. It takes half his body. You see all the gore, the blood and goop just falling out of him. He's like, whoa. And then he does it to the other side of the ship. And they keep going towards the, the, the panic room where um, uh, Ravage is hiding. And so they're doing that action scene repeatedly. Go to a kitchen chat. And that's like, oh, that's filled with metal. And they got the security guards. And they're getting stabbed in the tummy and the head with all the knives and the pans. They're being forced to go back in and out, chat. In and out. It's like, Jesus. Cool scene. Very cool scene. Got to give it to him. 
Um, eventually, they also they also use a flash. This is cool. I was wondering about this. Someone used a flash. I think it was Blaine number seven used a flash bang grenade and put it in a guy's mouth and it went off and it fucking blew his head off, chat. And just all the meat and gourds falls right out. It's like, everything even went like, that was a flash bang grenade. I don't know they did. That was the explosion, man. You don't do that. So he got fucked up good. Um, also, Ravage is like, all right, fuck this. I'm leaving my boat. And they also, they also put bombs underneath the boat. And so it starts sinking. That's when Ravage starts to get out. Also, Ravage like had a, the, like had the ultimate like blob man with him chat like you thought his generals were tubby wait until you meet this guy this guy's just oh bro. like he has like every every word starts to be bro. like that bro. that's all he's saying chat he gets stabbed in his tummy like multiple, like a fucking i don't know statue goes like inside of him <laughs> and he's dead it didn't work out for him uh but rabbit's like i want to get the fuck out of here he gets out chat he goes in, like a little boot and then he gets on a helicopter and even though, well, I guess, oh, I guess it kind of lines up because the helicopter's also searching the boat at the same time. And Ravage is like, get, get me out of here. But they go in the boat first. Uh, Ravage gets into the helicopter chatting. Who's in the helicopter? Fucking Ron Reynolds in the Underground Six and Mr. Murray, his brother. And they're like, all right. And then the, the Mexican cartel guy, he just fucking chokes out the guy who's protecting Ravage chat just to make sure Ravage is alone. And they're like, all right. Murray's like, okay, let's take him to the place, and they take him to the place, Chad. It is the it is the first um, refugee camp that he bombed uh, with the with the chemical weapons, and it's it, I mean, it, it's a, I I wish it was a more I mean I like the idea of it, but I, I wanted something to be more satisfying, you know? Because I and he, Ravage is like, no, just fucking kill me, don't don't make these mud people touch me. I'm so much better than them, like pretty much like that. Ravage was like, fuck no, and Murray's like, just do it, do it. And they push Ravage out the helicopter chat. He just starts running. He just starts, you know, running away. All the mob of people, they just they just come upon him, chat. They start beating him. I thought it would have been really, really cool if they just fucking ripped him apart or something. Uh, but they didn't do that. They just kind of, they go, man, they beat him up a little bit and they cut away. Uh, Murray, he's now the president of Turkestan chat. He's making reforms. The people are happy. Uh, he's, uh, you know, putting the generals who are doing the fair stuff on trial and imprisoning those guys because they commit war crimes. He's making Turkestan a good place. He's accepting aid to help the country and his people. We also follow the Underground Six chat. And, you know, a lot of them, like, you got the Mexican cartel guy and the blonde girl. They're, they're, they're fucking chat. They're doing that. The healthy relationship in the movie between the Cockney accent guy, Billy and Amelia. Uh, they're, they're doing like rock climbing and they're, they're like, yeah, but they're bonding. They're bonding. They're having an actual thing. Blaine throws a gun in the water for some reason. Cause I think Michael Bay just requires that in all those movies. There's a, like a moment the cop goes, and he's like, throw the gun in the water. Um, what helps is anyone? I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, and then we cut to Ron Reynolds, Chad. Ron Reynolds, you know what? I love that time. I met that French girl, that French waitress four years ago in Grand Ole Paris. I'm going to go ahead and check on what she's doing, chat. And he goes and checks on her, and he finds her because he's a creep, and he's just watching, just watching. And he sees that she's in a park, chat, and she's walking up to some kids. And she walks up to this one kid, and he's like, that kid looks like me. That's my kid. He's like, oh, my God. End credits, chat. That is six underground. Ryan Reynolds, the papa. And, I mean, she literally could, you know, be any, could, she could have married someone. I guess he would have found out, right? With all his fucking wealth and, you know, just spying on people. He didn't know that she had a child. Whatever. It doesn't matter, Chad. He has a kid. So he has something. Because Blaine says, you need something to live for, man. And he has something to live for. A booty call and in a, in a baby four years ago. That's what he has. <laughs> so, honestly, listen. You know, there is some impressive stuff in this film, Chad. There are some imaginative action scenes, which is, I think, uh, what takes away from them sometimes is the editing and the constant slow motion, like, it's not necessary. I think if you just slowed it down, just held the fucking camera still, and just showcased it, you it would have been much better. At least I could have liked it for that. The whole magnet sequence at the end is legitimately great. But, I mean, really, do I care about any of these characters? No, you don't. You don't care about them at all. They're, 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 they're boring. I mean, the, the dialogue that they're given is just, I mean, literally, they're just making references to TV shows and movies and doing catchphrases. It's not that fun, personally. Honestly, it's just grating after a while. But, there is, there, again, there's some action sequences that are legitimately entertaining, so I'll give the movie that. So I would give it a, a rental. I give it a low rental. It's not some old, I wouldn't even, nah, it's a solid rental. It's not some old bullshit or anything like that. Like, I, there is some real creativity here. 
I just honestly had they had the actors just had more to do with each other, had that chemistry. Because that's all. That's all. Say this, chat. What works about the the Fast and Furious movies is that you know they actually give those actors a, a lot to do. And there is a, you know, even though some of them don't like each other, for whatever reason, it, it works out. They have a sense of chemistry because they've been doing it for 20 goddamn years. And so they actually literally feel like a family. Like, here, that, that's not here at all. It kind of feels like the opposite of that. I mean, they even say, like, we're going to do the opposite of that, even though they kind of, in the end of the day, like, well, we're, not, we're, we're saying we're not going to do that, but then we kind of end up doing that anyway, but it's not earned in any capacity. So that's why it's a little frustrating. So, yeah, I'd give it a rental.